Finally, it is time for us to look into specific APIs. Hello and welcome to Code with Sar. I'm Sar. How are you doing? In this video, we're going to continue looking into Codename K. I'm going to spend 30 seconds ish to talk about what is Codename K for those new to the channel. If you are already familiar with it, feel free to jump to the next chapter. Codename K is a project that I'm building and sharing the process with you. It will have a desktop app, a phone app, and a web app to store the numbers. And it will use OneDrive as a backend storage to exchange data in between those clients. Check out the blueprint video for more details. For some context, I'm currently at the stage of investigation for the storage options. And again, I'm working for Microsoft as a senior developer. This channel or this project has nothing to do with my job. However, my tech preference is biased, and I hope you know that. Without further ado, let's dive in. We have looked together about the OAuth2 authentication for Graph API, and then we create a working client. This time, we're going to focus on the concrete APIs. And by that, I mean the get drive API, the get special folder, the get item, the check-in, check-out files, the download file, the upload, and the resumable upload. As you can tell, in the documentation, there are a handful of other APIs. I picked the subset out because those are relevant. You're going to ask why, and here's my explanation. The overall goal is to upload the data file and download it from the OneDrive. So the first thing I'm planning on doing is to get a special folder for the app. Then I want to check out the file, upload and overwrite the content of it, check it in, and call it down. Of course, I will need to be able to download it later. If you aren't very familiar with the idea of checking checkout, by the doc, check out the drive item resource to prevent others from editing the document and prevent your changes from being visible until the document is checked in. When the time we have multiple clients of codename K to access the same file, it will be very useful to coordinate in between them. For example, one client checking out the file will prevent other clients message around it. All right, let's get back. I'm going to show you in a while how do I verify these APIs. But before that, think with me. There are several questions that we might have at this moment. It is important whether the data flow is going to work or not relies on the answer to these questions. Question number one, what if app root doesn't exist? Do we need to create it manually? Otherwise, is that going to throw out a special type of exception? Number two, can upload and overwrite finished in atomic manner? It's best if we can do it that way. Otherwise, we would have to do delete and upload. And we'll have to be very, very careful about that because it could become delete and crash and the data loss. So upload and overwrite. Number three, what if the file got checked out and the client crashed? With those questions in mind, let's get to the fun of coding. The answer to the first question about the creation of the special folder turned out to be an easy one. On the doc, it says, and I quote, special folders are automatically created the first time an application tries to write one if it doesn't already exist. Isn't that good to know? Well, Investigation is more than just uh, reading the docs. It's the process of uh, learn the API and use it and verify it. To verify what the doc says, at this moment, I have two choices. I could write my own code or I could run some examples. By browsing, I found this uh, OneDrive API browser sample. When it runs, it's kind of like uh, a general purpose OneDrive manager. We'll have a menu for all the operations, sign in, sign out, delete the item, upload, so on and so forth. The main area shows all the items in the current folder. There's a panel on the right hand side for metadata, where you can see all the properties for the current item. There's also a quick breadcrumb style navigator beneath the menu. The app is built upon the Graph SDK. It's kind of a showcase. So if there's anything that can be done here, I will be able to write code to do that in my app. This OneDrive API browser, it has most of the APIs that I am interested in, but there were some problems. It is a WinForm application. I'll have to use Visual Studio for the full designer experience. Not a big deal for learning purpose. Then some of the code in it were out of date. For example, the authorization part is still based on graph.auth package. And the other issue was uh, some APIs that we want to try wasn't there. All in all, not perfect, but good enough. Moving on. The first thing that I did was to fork the project. And then I fixed the authorization. We had two videos talking about the authorization, especially the second one. I'll just skip the details. If you are interested, I'm going to put a link up there to the right top corner. Now to verify, if go to the app folder is going to create it. I created a menu item to go to the app folder specifically. The key line is this uh, line 509. It will grab the special drive of app root and get the drive item. The rest of it just show it on the UI. Let's see it in action. I'm running the OneDrive API browser now. The resource owner is the codename K test user. The app ID is codename K dev3, which is the one that we created together in the last video. Let me click go to app folder. 
Once I expand the parent reference, and the parent is uh, root slash apps. To verify the folder would be created automatically, let's go ahead and delete it manually. Now that we see the app root has been deleted, let's click this go to app folder again. Okay, no exception. Let's verify it's there. Yep, it is. Just for fun, I'm going to delete the whole apps folder and try this again. If you want to do the same, you are fully responsible for your action, alright? A free tip? You might delete data from other apps. Oh wait, this whole video is free. Anyway, you get the point. Now question number two, can we do upload and override in one step? The answer is yes, but I find something else that is also interesting. There are two APIs for upload. The upload upload is easy to use, but have a limitation of four megabytes in size. There is another API called resumable upload that actually is a group of APIs. By the documentation, it is not very easy to infer out how to use SDK to reach the same goal. Luckily, I got some example code. Now I'll show you the code for both APIs. The first one is here in line 357. It's a one-liner, there's not too much to talk about. You get a path to the parent folder, and then call put, and provide the content as a stream. The only part that we need to verify is that overwritten is supported, and we'll do it along with the resumable upload. Let's take a look at the code first. On line 582, we create a drive item uploadable properties. In it, we supply the conflict behavior to be replaced. And then we will create an upload session. We decide the slice size, and there is another constraint saying that the max slice size must be multiple of 320kb. I couldn't find any documentation talking about that, but that's provided in the example code. Now we created the file upload task, and associated with the upload session, it also supports the progress report. Finally, we reach the point to upload the file. Wow, that's a lot. Does it worth it? Let's try it out. Let's start to verify the one miner. I'm going to upload a JPG, which is smaller than 4 megabytes. And it succeeded. To verify that the overwritten is okay, I'm going to upload the same file again. You see two thumbnails on the UI? That's just a bug that when we're adding a new item to the UI, we didn't check if the item is already there. When I refresh the content, the duplicated item would be gone. Now, let me try to upload a file larger than 4 megabytes. And it failed. That matched the expectation. Let's try the resumable upload instead. And you see my progress bar, it goes up little by little. That's just how slow my internet is. Okay, eventually it uploaded successfully. And now I'll do it again, just making sure the replacement policy for resolving the conflict actually works. All right, all right, I'm going to fast forward. That I think is enough investigation for us to answer the question about uploading and replace. Now check file in and out. The API itself looks simple, there's not too much to talk about. However, it doesn't answer the question that we raised. What if the file got checked out and never checked in? In order to figure that out, I wrote the code to check in and check out the files. To my surprise, the code didn't work, and the error indicates the API doesn't exist. This is where things become tricky. I did not know where was the problem. It could be the API doesn't exist, but it could also be there's a bug in the SDK. Of course, there's also a minor chance for me to not write the code correct. Now, if you're only interested in the result, I'm going to tell you now it is that the checking and checkout is not supported for OneDrive Personal. Me, on the other hand, want to share with you how did I figure that out. And I hope this could put some tools into your debugging box. First thing came into my mind is to figure out whether it is on the server side or the SDK side. And I use Fiddler to figure that out. I'm looking to several places. First thing that got my attention is uh, that the path is microsoft.graph.checkout instead of checkout. The second thing is although the message is API not found, the return code is 400 instead of 404. To determine if it is because uh, of the wrong path, I will go ahead and reissue the request from the composer. And I'll update the path. Once I issue the query again, 
I got the same error. At this moment, I suspect the problem is on the server side. To double check that, I found another project called Graph Explorer to allow me to invoke raw APIs against the graph endpoint without using an SDK. Perfect tool to rule out SDK bugs. So I did it, and it is giving me the exact same error. Okay, it is not the SDK. But then, think it again. Is that possible I am just calling the API wrong? I didn't have a way to tell for a while, and I filed a GitHub issue. I was kind of blocked until it strikes me all of a sudden. Behind the Graph API, there's OneDrive Personal, there's OneDrive for Business, and there's the SharePoint Storage. Is it possible the check-in checkout just wasn't supported by OneDrive Personal? To verify that, I took advantage of another account that comes with the OneDrive for Business. It worked flawlessly, and the path could either be checkout or Microsoft.graph.checkout. Well, do we just found a hidden API? Haha. <laughs> Remember the GitHub issue I filed? After a couple of days exchanging of information back and forth, I got the confirmation from the server side that the checking checkout is not supported in OneDrive Personal. Alright, checking checkout is not going to be there. We probably need to redesign the data flow. And I'm glad it's found now than later. Alright guys, I'm glad we did the investigation together. I'm thinking about database design or API abstraction for next video. Let me know which one will you be more interested in to hear first. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Keep coding, keep improving. And I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.